Hi people, my name is Vexter and I do models for 3D printing. Uh, today I'm gonna show you how I model stuff inside ZBrush and uh, I'm gonna use XP Pen Artist Pro 15.6 for that. Um, I got the device a month ago and so far I can just say that I'm really like loving it. So um, this is gonna be a two part tutorial. Uh, we're gonna do something from Sphere. I will quickly add some details just to show you how everything works and uh, in the second part we're gonna add fur, uh, hair, stuff like that. So stick around. Today I'm gonna try to make uh, orangutan and first thing that I usually do, I, I usually start modeling from Sphere but this time I'm gonna make it slightly different. I'm gonna use few different subtools to to create a face. Uh, so right now I'm just gonna quickly do the, the basic shape uh, I'm gonna make this top part a little bit smaller and yeah this looks great so I'm gonna add another sub tool another sphere and I'm gonna use this part for the mouth and for the nose area like I said I could have done this as one sub tool but Sometimes I like to experiment. I like to look at uh, faces uh, through through bunch of simplified shapes. And when I was looking at references of orangutan, I've noticed that I can I can do it with two spheres and basically one cylinder, and that that's gonna be a good start. So I'm going right now with that. Like I said, it's it's how you like to do stuff. I could have just applied a bunch of play on top of one sub tool and smooth that out but this is a nice experiment so now I'm choosing the third sub tool which is the cylinder and after I position it I'm gonna quickly adjust the shape so I'm gonna use the move tool to do that some people like to use snake hook because uh, they just like the style more now I'm gonna smooth this cylinder. I'm gonna hit this Sculptress button. And uh, that's a really neat feature in ZBrush. And now you, you also have it inside uh, ZBrush Core. And it, it's a great thing. It, it's just applying more, more polygons to the part that you're smoothing out instead of just arranging actual polygons that you already have and now I'm gonna go into geometry and I'm gonna hit this dynamesh so I need to hold shift and make square and then I can smooth everything out so th this looks like like a decent start now I'm gonna carve nostrils just looking at reference images in, in the other monitor somewhere like that yeah and I'm gonna also make the mouth somewhere here yeah that's fine great thing about ZBrush is that you can really adjust everything how many times you want until it just feels right. Right now I'm just carving uh, holes where the eyes are gonna be. And you can see that every time I do that I, I smooth everything a little bit. Some people are avoid doing that. They, they like to mess around first with less polygons and then start dividing it and applying more details. Again, I'm I'm doing everything how I feel at, at that point. Sometimes I do it more like like them. Sometimes I start adding more and more uh, polygons, more details, which uh, sometimes can really really not be a great idea because you can easily crank up the amount of polygons and your software, your computer is gonna get really slow. Like I said, you, it's something that you really need to experiment for yourself. Now I'm gonna add another sub tool. It's gonna be another sphere, and we're gonna use that 
for the eyes. So I'm going into this transparent mode to position everything. Okay, this looks kind of fine, fine, and we're gonna mirror it and press X so we have mirrored image so uh, we have symmetry turned on. Um, why am I using it like that? Well, you you can you can uh, you can make your eyes on the sub tool that you have already created, but. I don't suggest that because if you try to move anything uh, you will affect also the shape of uh, the model's eyes and trust me you don't want to do that shape needs to be perfect rounded and in this way I can change one sub tool and eyes are gonna stay the same and it, you, you just have a better control eyes are probably the, the area that I tweak the most. I'm <laughs> never satisfied with that part. And now you can see that I'm just adding rough details which we're gonna uh, adjust quickly. But um, right now I'm gonna do some changes to the nose. I'm gonna do more details on that area. And um, I, I know how other people are doing that, but I like to add a little bit of detail on each part uh, just so, so I can feel better. It's, it's not something that everyone should do, but uh, just overall shapes on some areas, uh, you know, just they just make the, the entire difference. Like if you go back a minute ago and just see the, the nose part, it, it looks really off and uh, now by just applying a little bit more of clay I think it made a huge difference and when you start doing something like that you want to to quickly feel that you are doing the right thing so now I'm gonna focus more about on, on the eyes uh, I need to start adding more details and you can see that I don't have enough polygons in that area and there's a quick fix for that. So I'm gonna turn on the sculptures and I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna smooth this area and you can see that density of polygons has increased wherever I was smoothing with sculptures turned on. So this means that I can add more details on, on that area. And uh, I'm still keeping a low amount of polygons on the rest of the model. Because if you if you just do the subdivision, it's gonna add more polygons on everything and um, you can quickly have a lot of polygons. But you really don't need polygons everywhere. And later I'm gonna show you how you can evenly spread out everything. So now, now eyelids look much better and I can start adding parts and, and you can see right here that this part has more polygons and I can make smooth line and then it hits the area where it has less polygons and you basically can, cannot add any details. Just to quickly explain all the subdivision. So if you go here into geometry and you, you can hit divide and it, is, it will add a lot of polygons uh, on the entire model. So now you can see that there are much more polygons than uh, there were before. Also shortcut is control D. And you can still see that around the eyes, nostrils, where I was using uh, sculptures, I had more polygons, but now I want to adjust everything. I want my polygons to be evenly spread so I'm hitting zero measure which will use all the amount of polygons that I have these active points which is 1.7 million right now and it's gonna try to evenly spread everything and delete unnecessary ones and now you can see how everything looks much nicer 
and evenly spread out. And the amount of polygons went below 1 million, which is great, because, like I said, your software, your computer is gonna operate much faster and you will not have problems. And now I can start applying more details and you can see how lines are now gr looking great. But um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly adjust the, the intensity of my brush and uh, because these lines are really harsh and it's great for 3d printing don't get me wrong but uh, I want to to be able to make it more organic so I'm gonna just lower the intensity and do more passes on each line to, to give me better depth and you no, know, you, you can also adjust the the strength of of each stroke you're applying directly from from your uh, graphic display. I prefer it this way. Now I'm gonna turn off the symmetry because I want to add some lines here and uh, the the areas that are connecting. It's never good to do any kind of symmetry because that is gonna be visible. And when you're doing uh, faces, uh, it's really important to break the symmetry as soon as possible. For example, if you take a selfie and uh, then you cut one part of your face and mirror it, your face is immediately gonna look off because uh, none of, of organic stuff in, in life is not perfectly similar, uh, symmetrical. And uh, by just applying few changes to your model, you will see that uh, everything will just look more organic, much better than when when the symmetry is turned on. So now I'm gonna use them standard uh, just to to apply more details and uh, make make the separation between some parts, like like the nose and. Uh, I'm gonna make the, this cut in the middle. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, this is going in the, the right direction. And um, now I'm gonna tweak the eyebrows. I want some kind of different... I'm searching for some kind of different expression. So I'm gonna lower the eyebrows, I'm gonna make this face slightly older, a little bit sad. And uh, I've masked the, the part around the eyes so I can just lower everything. Also this part needs to go a little bit out. One of the things that you need to do a lot when you're 3D modeling is uh, you need to rotate your model as much as possible. You can't just sculpt uh, from one point and because you will, you will get surprised. For example, if I just sculpt everything from from this point, it's gonna look fine until I rotate the model, and and that happened to me a lot of times. I can then see that everything looks completely different, uh, especially if you're doing, for example, human faces. And one well, of my friend explained that in, in a really great way. He said, everything look, looked great from, from the uh, front and then I rotated it and it looked like it hit the wall. <laughs> and it's true. So rotate your model as much as possible. Look from every single angle and uh, you, you will spot much faster what's wrong with your model in that way. Yeah, I, I can see that I need to adjust this area. It needs to go much more down and this one needs to go a little bit more inside. Okay. <laughs> I like this face already. I think all, almost everyone will tell you uh, not to start applying bunch of different details until you're happy but I'm gonna quickly show you 
how you can apply some stuff and still get away with everything. So uh, if you click on light box and go to alphas, you can pick one of these nice uh, materials, wrinkles. And uh, I'm gonna switch from this thing to drag. And let me go a little bit more closer. And I'm gonna turn on the symmetry. And if you start dragging, you can get something like this. Only problem is that this area is now facing outside and we want everything to be inside. So either you're gonna hold alt or you're gonna click on this button, which will subtract. So now you have texture, you have scars like this, but you can still see that there are not a lot of details in it. So we need to divide it even more to add more polygons. So click on divide or, or control D to do that. There are much more details, but uh, you really shouldn't leave it like that. Um, if you look at, at skin of uh, basically every organic thing, you will see that there are so many layers so many different parts that you are just missing out because you're not focused on that and uh, you, you you can just experiment you can add layers on top layers smaller details bigger details and it's gonna make everything much nicer less perfect so now i'm just applying a few of those and moving them out because that's gonna be just my base thing don't forget that I'm holding alt all the time also another option where you can basically use this alpha and spray on your details uh, it works in in a lot of cases sometimes not but if you click here and you click on spray and I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and decrease the intensity. You can see that now I'm painting some sort of a texture, skin texture on top and I'm using exactly the same alpha that I've used for the bigger areas. And yet it looks completely different. And again, I'm not applying details at this point when I'm sculpting stuff. Uh, I think this is way too early. I would rather apply more, more, I would rather carve more details and be sure that my model looks good enough before, before that. Uh, but this needs to be a shorter tutorial, so we're just gonna skip a few things. And now I'm gonna show you how to apply fur. Um, you can sculpt fur you can add fur. It really depends, are you 3D printing your model or you're gonna just do some kind of digital art. So I'm gonna first show you what I would do if I'm not sculpting everything for 3D printing. So I'm gonna just mask this area and then I'm gonna hit light box and I'm gonna go into fibers and I'm gonna pick this short baby double click and you can see that it's applied to, to the model and and it, it kind of looks <laughs> cute but we're gonna fix that uh, we're gonna adjust that by going to fiber mesh tab and there are a lot of options and we're not gonna go through them I'm just gonna show you quickly few how you can add length uh, more more hair just differently it, it's really a lot of experimentation and when I apply this, when I click on accept, we're gonna have even more fun with it. But I'm gonna quickly reduce the amount of fibers for the sake of this tutorial and yeah, this, <laughs> this looks kind of okay so I'm just gonna accept it. And you can see now that I have another sub tool and it's only with 
with that with those fibers and now we can actually tweak them even more so if you pick any of these brushes here you can you can do something with it so we're gonna groom short hair you can see you can make changes on top of it so just imagine you can you can add a lot of fibers on top of the he he uh, head and then you can basically comb the hair in a way however you want so that's one of the neat features of ZBrush but like I said if, if you're going with 3d printing then you actually need to sculpt your fur on top and I'm gonna use one technique where basically I'm gonna just duplicate the head and I'm gonna shrink down the head a little bit so I'm gonna click on the move tool sorry on the scale tool and just make everything slightly smaller so the, the smaller model goes inside and I'm gonna probably have to adjust some areas with the move tool um, but it's really hard to see the difference so I pressed shift F which goes uh, which turns the wireframe for only the sub tool that it's selected and now I can easily see what is coming out of the, the model and um, there's also another option that we can use so let me quickly adjust this okay so we can go into the formation and let, let me hide everything uh, you can go to inflate but go into negative and it's gonna make the model shrink itself a little bit so now I'm, I'm almost certain that there will be no leaking into another model so now I still have the inside model selected the one that is basically hidden and I'm gonna use clay buildup to just start adding more clay to that that one and you can see that how I'm using that to basically make uh, just rough shapes where the fur is gonna be and trust me this this is a really great uh, thing because you're not affecting your uh, original sculpt in any way and if you decide to to change some stuff you can always just duplicate another head again make it smaller and apply details uh, for example I was I'm doing um, King Kong diorama right now and I have changed for I, I think four or five times already and if I just apply that to to my uh, original mesh I would have problem like I would have to search for some older save games and in the meantime, I've, I've changed so many other stuff that, you know, that would be impossible. I would have to go and start working from scratch, which really wouldn't be a great idea. So n now I have applied just basic shapes. Like you, you can see that I wasn't going for any kind of details. It's just rough thing that we're going to smooth out and get some nice curves. Now it's time to smooth everything out properly, so I'm holding shift and smoothing out stuff. Um, I could use sculptures to do that much easier. But this is gonna be fine because I'm, I'm just gonna apply a lot of different details on top of that. I could have go into zero measure and lower the amount of, of polygons there just to, to have better control, but again, this is gonna be a quick tutorial and I just wanna show you quickly what you can do. So I'm gonna quickly change the color of subtool uh, to apply that you need to go into color and click on fill object. One thing that is confusing everyone is it looks like everything 
is changed and painted in that color but if you go into the slider and move it all the way up you will see that only the sub tool that was selected has the, the actual color applied. So now I'm gonna use uh, one of the tools that people don't like that much. It's, uh, I think it's pronounced rake. Uh, and basically I use it in, in a specific way because if you just use the default version and I'm gonna click to show you how that works, um, it's gonna, it's not gonna look great. Like, you, you will see a lot of steps and weird cuts and it, it just looks awful. Uh, but if you lower the intensity, uh, then it's gonna look much, much better. It's, gonna, it's not gonna look that ugly. And keep in mind that again, I'm gonna smooth stuff and I'm just applying this for variation for different uh, texture look. And um, also I like to use it because towards the edges you can you can really do different um, different variation that is gonna look nice. Also you can get online a bunch of different brushes for the, the the hair for the fur which work also great and you can apply them in the same way as we apply textures on on top of uh, this orangutan's face another tool that i like to use is also damp standard it also makes a huge difference and with uh, different combination of intensity and size you can you can make a bunch of nice variations there are few mistakes that you can see here but they will they will soon be gone because I'm now smoothing out everything and you can see there are just tiny parts that have actually stayed and later I'm gonna use this rake tool more aggressive I'm gonna use bigger strokes like that and uh, I'm following all the lines that I've made with with clay buildup because you constantly need to, to go with the same stroke because I, if I start doing something that's going the other way around it, it's, it's gonna look weird is gonna uh, bend in different ways and some of these mistakes we're gonna quickly fix by smoothing out stuff i don't know why actually that happens but if you go on top of that again you can quickly fix it we're gonna smooth everything a little bit more okay and we're gonna go even more aggressive on this area And here you can see that variation I was talking about. I'm I'm holding Alt and releasing while I'm doing strokes, and you can see the the power of this brush actually. And again, and I don't know how many times I repeated that. You just do everything until you're actually satisfied. There's bunch of trials and errors that uh, you can see that I'm I'm having a lot of gaps there that we're gonna fix in the in the next part when I start coming back to to some areas and you can even like add parts wherever you want but eh, <laughs> we're not gonna keep that Again, I'm swinging out and I'm actually adding clay on some areas. Again, with much more aggressive strokes. Sometimes, and this is just an idea, uh, sometimes I'm even adding separate sub tools only for uh, 
you know, just some chunks of hair that I want to control easily later. And I'm gonna adjust the, the beard or whatever that thing should be called because it needs to be a little bit bigger and you can see that I'm not using symmetry at all anymore at this point. Again, it's, it's great for the variation. Done! Okay, uh, actually I'm gonna remove these. I don't know why I did those. Yep. And that's how I do uh, these kind of models in ZBrush. I really hope you have liked this tutorial and that I was able to teach you something new. Uh, like I said, whatever you do, just keep working on it until you're satisfied. Uh, sometimes it's great to uh, take a break, which I'm gonna do right now. Uh, go out for an hour, come back and you will see all the mistakes on, on your model and what you can fix. And uh, that's gonna make your model even better. Anyway. Thank you for watching this and I wish you all a really great day. Bye.